She's All That. Hi, and welcome to the She's All That video podcast. My name is September Smith. Usually I'm the host of the show, but today I am actually going to be interviewed by the co-host of the show, Rain Chimizu Smith. She's Hi everyone, that. I'm Rain Chimizu Smith. I'm an admin member at Of Course Consulting, the sponsor of the She's All That podcast. And today, like we said, we're turning the tables. I'm asking September all the juicy questions about her areas of expertise. We're going to be diving into how a business person or an entrepreneur like you can use podcast guesting to blow your shit up. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've given you the host reins for today. That might not have been how I would have said that, but hey, we're going to be talking about how podcast guesting, if when you use it strategically, can really blow up your profile, your audience, your network, and ultimately your bottom line. It is one of the biggest marketing opportunities that's happening right now. And I personally believe you need to get on it. Rain, thank you so much for doing the hosting this week. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. All right. So September, your absolute favorite topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we have you on the hot seat today. I need to know, why should business people be considering using podcast guesting appearances? What's wrong with using social media marketing? Everywhere I look on social media, I see people preaching Instagram for social media marketing, Twitter, Pinterest, all these different ways. It seems like everyone's screaming into the void, but you come to the table with a different angle. Why should people be considering using podcast guesting appearances? And what's wrong with this social media marketing that I'm seeing? Okay, a couple of things. Yes, yeah, start right there. That's a good place to start. The social media marketing. We have been doing it for, depending on how long you've been in business, five years, 10 years. We have been, for, for businesses that have to get their message out, have to optimize their reach and do it on a budget. And what business isn't on a budget other than the absolute biggest players on the planet? We have been using social media marketing, either organic or paid, for the last five, 10 years in some cases. And it has become a staple in most people's marketing plan. However, anybody that has been doing it has noticed that gradually over the years, gradually and then all of a sudden, social media, Facebook in particular, is not giving us the ROI that it used to. Like it used to be, you throw an ad up on Facebook, you got hundreds of people that saw it and engaged with you. Not only is that avenue saturated right now with people trying to get their messages out and using it as their main form of business marketing. Also, pay, since about 2017, Facebook has been increasingly moving to a pay to play model. So you don't let you put your stuff up there, but it, we're now down to the estimate somewhere between if you're one to, if you're lucky, 3% of your audience that you're connected to on Facebook is actually seeing what you put out there. Wow. So when you consider how hard we have to work to get seen on social media, it's just getting harder and harder to do that. And also there's, there's a really great graphic that I'll be sharing here that talks about the longevity of social media posts. And it's scary. I mean, the fastest one, the estimate is for a Twitter post that you put out, you know, be it for personal or be it for business, has a life of about 18 minutes. Facebook, five wow. hours, couple hours, and then it goes down from there. This stuff is gone within a day or two. And Some yet of the more spending so much energy creating this content to be oh pushing my... out every day and it's disappearing. Yeah, and and I mean you're on a treadmill creating this content and sure you can repurpose it sometime down the track, but it is becoming an all-consuming part of people's businesses for an ever decreasing return on investment. So yeah. social media there are limitations now to what you can do with that. And the reason that I'm talking about podcasting is because what kind of is not on a lot of people's radar is that podcasting and being a podcast guest, the, the whole podcast content, regardless of whether you're the host or the guest, that is not social media. That is okay. not social. Social media is a two-way exchange. It's a platform where there are creators and consumers that come together. And you know, on social media, you can put your content out there, but there are a million people piling in and throwing their comments and their their content and their posts in there and just drowning yours in the noise. It really feels like people screaming into the void. Oh, doesn't it though? Yeah. yeah. So, so what, but, are the, what are the main key differences between social media content and podcast casting? Well, podcast, podcast content, podcast, podcast content is actually 
not social media. It's on a one way platform. It's actually broadcast media. And that kind of eludes a lot of people. They, they just think it's another form of content. When you have been on a podcast or created a podcast yourself, that content is now distributed to a dozen plus of the largest platforms, audio platforms on the planet. And these are big, like iTunes, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. It goes on and on and on. And there is millions and millions of people, quarter billion people regularly coming there. And when they come to those, yeah. when they come to those platforms, they're not coming to drop their comments or to, to post their memes of their cats or their lunch. They are coming expressly to spend a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour or more to consume content. And they're coming looking for new content, content like yours. So when your content is there, it's curated. It's think of it like Netflix for audio. You're not out there kind of drowning in a sea of crazy frenzied posting. It is yeah. there. It's listed under the keywords. It's not throttled like on social media where the people that have paid for their ads get seen first or on Google as well. And people who come to listen, they have an intimate connection with the person. They come to form an intimate connection with the person they're listening to because you're you're listening to this person for 45 minutes unbroken. That's that's a whole other thing. The, the way people interact with podcasts is different than any other media. And they, they know that most the average time, the average duration of a podcast episode is somewhere between 35 and 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they know that podcast listeners on average, and that's a quarter billion people on average, are listening to 80% of that, which of course means wow. a lot of people are listening to all of it, 80% with a YouTube video or a Facebook video or a post that you put on there. Facebook, you're lucky if three to 5% see it and or engage in it. YouTube, you're lucky if people will stay on there for a few minutes. When people are listening to a podcast, they want to immerse themselves in something that they're gonna be able to hang in there and listen to and really get into and enjoy while they're doing other things. And come back for more. Oh uh, yeah, and psychologically, they know that audio is one of the most connecting medias, the senses that we have that are hearing. It's one of the most connecting things. And when you are in somebody's head for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and they're listening to you, they have created an emotional, to whatever degree, an emotional bond with you that yeah. you're not going to get. Yeah, it's Video does give you some kind of emotional bond if you've watched it for a good um, amount of time. I've experienced that. I'm sure most people have. You feel like you know the person. when you've been in their head for 30, 40 minutes, you, you've now become that no like trust person. You become the expert in that field for them or one of the experts, yeah. assuming, assuming you know what to say and you say it well, yeah. then yeah, you have this opportunity to get in somebody's head for 30 and 40 minutes. What other content can you create that you could achieve that? Yeah, it seems like the obvious option when you lay it out so simply like that. You know, you're not getting the who has the attention span to sit down and listen to more than five minutes of a video. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems yep. like the podcast guesting, getting on a podcast and putting your message out there. It seems like the obvious solution, the obvious choice for, for marketing. Well, when you consider, I mean, I like to look at it as this like kind of a triumvirate of the, this Venn three circle Venn diagram. There is there's a visibility to podcast that far exceeds that of social media. You are, you've just leapfrogged over that social media and the guest blogging thing, even if it's on an influential site, getting on a podcast because it's on a broad, it's on broadcast channels, your visibility has just like leapt way over those. Yeah. So there's the visibility that you, you didn't have to work so hard instead of like starting with social media, maybe getting a guest post and then getting invited and you, you climb the ladder, you can come in right at that high, that mid level of visibility. So you get the visibility, you got the longevity. Mm -hmm. It is literally, we know that it's somewhere between five plus years that your stuff will still be out there. Your content will still be findable and people will still be consuming it. Wow. As opposed how to 18 people, minutes. How people find this content? All they have to do is go and it's becoming increasingly popular to go on to whatever your favorite platform is for listening to podcasts. And you just put in what your interests are, your keywords. If you know what your keywords are, and those are the keywords that your audience is going to be looking for, they will find you. I've gone on and looked and found episodes from three, four, five years ago. 
and they're, they're still good episodes, assuming that they're not news related. But even then, OK, it's a bit of an insight into what was happening at the time. But yeah. that content has a longevity that just can't even be touched, even by blogs. That's true. And then, I have numerous times gone on Spotify and searched a specific person's name who I would like to hear episodes, you know, them speaking on episodes and you get a list, a full list of everything they've ever appeared on. Yes. So yeah. that stuff is still out there being found. It's kind of think, like I said, think of it like Netflix for audio, a consuming population coming there to find content like yours. Yeah. Wow. What kind of solution? Yeah. So of the three, I like, I like to, I like to get across. There's the enhanced visibility that you're not going to get on social media. There's the mm -hmm. longevity. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fact that there are these 12 of the biggest platforms on the planet are actively pushing your stuff. Yeah, that yeah, podcast content, it's, it's, as you said, it's a no brainer. It's what you want to be doing. And the, the reason why is because it's free. Right. If you know what you're doing, you can access this free media exposure. So everything kind of comes in waves. Podcasts has, have been very popular for the last number of years. Do you see this continue this trend, this upward trend continuing? Yes, I do for a, sh for a short while. But what I also see is I kind of feel that now is the time. And the reason I feel that way is because we've had the surge over the pandemic. We've had the surge in audience. It was always there and it was growing slowly, but it just like took a, a huge ramp up yeah. to we've got a quarter of a billion regular listeners. You've, so you've got the audience coming, but you also have smell of bloods in the water industry and corporations are seeing there is an opportunity here and industry and corporations are not going to leave a nice free opportunity like this for the masses to get hold of for very long and things are already afoot changes are coming and i, I see it going to either a tiered or a pay to play mm -hmm. form of media really you know it's, it's going to be sooner rather than later so that's why i feel like now is the time do not wait and and also it's not a saturated market there are two point, I think at the beginning of this month, there were 2.3 million podcasts listed. However, probably about half a million of those are actually defunct. They're not, they're still out there. The content's still findable, but people aren't actively producing new episodes. Right. So you have somewhere in the vicinity of 2 million podcasts out there. Okay. So that intrigued me what you just said. The podcast may not still be active, but that content's still out there to be found by your mm -hmm. audience members. Yes. So that means the more podcasts you go on and the more valuable video content that you produce from that or content that you produce from that, you're building your portfolio. Oh my God. It is, it is anywhere. It's exactly like that. It's a portfolio. And the really great thing is, I mean, you could, and I was just recently, I held a webinar with a friend of mine who is a podcast host coach. She teaches people how to create their own podcast. And that was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the argument was what's best for you guesting or hosting. Well, Probably it doesn't take a lot of imagination to figure out that it's a whole lot less work to do the guesting. You just rock that up on someone. Be my next question. Oh yeah. my God. Why yeah. You just start my own podcast. Because it, it's about 10 times minimum, 10 times more work to have your own podcast. It's an ongoing effort. So if you want to create that portfolio, that online curated portfolio that we were talking about, why aren't you out there leveraging other people's audiences, other people's networks? and getting seen instead of starting from scratch and starting to build your own audience. Yeah. Get out there, drop by. I, I laughingly say that it's a matter of, you know, swing by once a month for an hour or two, drop your interview and then go away while they do all the work to create that episode. They'll let yeah. you know when it's coming out. And then you put it some effort into helping co-create or co-promote the show. Yeah. And that's all you, and for that, you now have the social proof. You definitely should have that now on your website to show the podcast shows you've been on with links yeah. so people can go and consume that. You, you have this lovely portfolio collections of you showcased as the star, as the sought after authority in your field talking about X, Y, Z. You can't buy that. Well, you can and buy that, but this the podcast that you go on, they create this curated material for you. You sit back and let it happen and you get the beautiful end product. Yes. And the amazing thing is not only is it this lovely curated collection of you, these little 30, 40 minute cameos of you sitting in your brilliance, talking about what you do best and giving people a taste of who you are and what it is to work with you. Every one of these episodes and every one of these platforms point back at you, your website, and your links. 
So even into the future, people can still find your website. They can find the links to your offers, to anything it is that you're selling. And in addition to that, it's really a great thing for the SEO of your website because to have That's something people pay for to have absolutely. their links out there for yes. people to find for, for links pointing back at your website yes yeah. it, this is really great especially links that come from platforms or websites with really strong domain authority and google podcasts and spotify and all of those channels have some of the highest domain authority on the planet so mm -hmm. yeah it, it's an incredible boost to your business your profile your seo you name it it's such a valuable thing to have yeah so i'm just wondering it seems pretty easy to get on a podcast so what's the need for a special training program um i jokingly say that that, that is both that's both a, a good thing and a bad thing it's really easy so there, there is a very low barrier to entry unlike say television or getting in in someone's summit it's yeah. easy to get in but the where that's the downside is that okay so devil's advocate it's pretty easy to get on any podcast so what's the need for a special training program well first of all it's not easy to get on any podcast but it is easy to get on a podcast because when you've got 2.5 well 2.3 million podcasts out there right now there are a lot of people who might just wander up and ask you to be a guest on their show and you might just think that's a bucket list item hell yeah i'll do that so that's kind of akin to, uh, say, give the analogy of it's pretty easy to get behind the wheel of a car with no prior experience and drive it. Like, there's the car, here are the keys, away you go. But you know what? There's a similar outcome, and there's a pretty slim chance of success. There's a very good chance it's going to be a train wreck. And the difference is that when you go on a random podcast, you're not prepared. You don't really know what it is to be a guest. You don't have all the elements in place. You don't not anybody, no one has a lot of control when you're a podcast guest. The host has the control. So you're kind of playing this game of needing to know what it is you, you want to say and keeping the conversation going and being engaging and hoping it all kind of goes in a way that stands to be a beneficial piece of content for you and your business. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you want to say and the host doesn't know what you want to say or what your goals are, there's like almost no chance that it's going to end up like that. So the, the just going on a podcast, not only does that not stand you in good stead, if somebody finds that podcast, all it's going to do is confuse them. They're not going to know who you are or, or they're not going to get your brand message. Right. They don't know why you matter to them. So it can actually be something that's a, a damaging thing for your business because if people find those podcast episodes where you didn't know what you're talking about and you just ended up having a random conversation with somebody, they've now written you off as a serious professional or as a potential solution to their problem. Why would you do that to yourself? This yeah. is not like a Facebook live where you go on and well, it didn't go so well. It'll be gone in a few days. Nobody's going to find it. In yeah. fact, it's, it's hard enough to find your own. If you went on somebody's show and you're on their live a week later, it's hard to find it. Nobody's going to see it. Podcasts, like I said, they're going to be out there for years. So why would you do that to yourself? You have to be strategic. You have to know what you're doing. Really? That's something really important to know. So what does one need to do or have in place to make a podcast guesting appearance really work for their business? Well, both as a podcast host myself, who uh, has ended up coaching uh, way more guests than I care to mention through the process of being a, a good podcast guest. I'm at the point now where it's like, no, you have to know what you're doing or I just, I can't afford the time helping mm -hmm. you figure out how to shine. So uh, coming from that perspective, knowing what they need to do, but also coming from a very analytical perspective where it's like, okay, how, what is the process here? I've come up with five steps, five strategic steps to becoming a successful, effective podcast guest for PR profit and social proof, as I call it, to make it work for your business. And the five steps are, it starts with one, your story. You need to know what your story is. For people that already know their brand story and they've done the work or they've worked with a professional to figure that out, they know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then this might be like, what is this? Your story or your brand story is what defines you. It's, it's who you are, it's what you do, and it's why that matters to your audience, to your potential clients. And if you're not able to give your host or your audience or even your market in your, for, in your marketing content, that story that they need to understand what you do so that you'll lock it in their imagination and hopefully 
they fully understand it. They want to work with you and they want to tell people about you. If you don't supply that brand story in a concise manner, well, they will either one, just not even bother because it's like, I don't get it. I have no idea what she does. They're not putting in the, the cognitive work to figure out what you do. You were supposed to do that. Or two, they'll kind of cobble some idea together. They'll create their own definition of what it is you do. And I can pretty much guarantee you, it's not going to be the definition that you want them having or telling other people about. So yeah. super important that you know your story. That is the foundation for all the other steps for being a podcast guest. Because once you Just know that, on that, I'm okay. curious, how many people come to you and or how many people go on podcasts and have their story, have that really strong message that is strategically crafted to speak on when they guess? For the people that come to me as guests, I have a vetting process and I specifically ask them what are their signature talks or their brand story and what are their calls to action. And I can see through my form when they fill it out if they really know what they're talking about. And also they send me their one sheet and or their, you definitely have to give me your square, high definition, high resolution, great headshot that I can be using. Uh, so that tells me that they're a professional. They know what they're doing. This is something that they're used to doing. They've got a goal. This isn't just a random, I'll be on your podcast. Yeah. If, yeah. So that that is how I can vet it. It's It's quite easy to see who knows their story and who doesn't know their story. And if you don't know your story, you're not ready for this. I'm just wondering, I would, as a business, assume mm -hmm. that most people know their story and know their talking points, keywords, and come to you with that in hand. No. But is that the case? No, it's not the case. And that, that's absolutely saying nothing, no criticism of those people, because I have met, uh, my podcast is showcases women doing, my, my tagline is conversations with women doing awesome shit. And I see these women, they know their shit. They are doing some incredible things. They're making big changes in lives and in, in society and truly impactful women. However, really, when you think about it, what in life causes us to sit down and analyze and actually articulate what we do and, and the magic that we bring? There's usually no need for that. It's only mm -hmm. when you start having to get into media and start presenting yourself and letting people know and that's where the whole brand story comes in. That's that whole process where you kind of take a step back and it's really hard to do by yourself. Uh, yeah. There's a really great phrase for that. And it's like, it's when you're inside the jar, it's really hard to see what's on the label. We are so much in our own brilliance. Want If we wanted to tell somebody what it is, unless you've gone through the process of, of defining your brand story, usually with someone else, it's hard. You've never articulated it yourself. You've never it had to. I'm just me. I, way. Yeah, I do what I do. Yeah. And the people that I work with may get, they probably haven't heard the brand story or that you probably, they couldn't probably give you the brand story. Right. But they know you're amazing. But you have to be able to articulate that. And to, so to do that. To me like more people do not need that help to craft yes. this strategic brand story. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, we don't learn that in school. You have no reason to do that until you start wanting to present and get yourself out on media like podcast Definitely. guesting. Okay. I got you on a bit of a tangent there. You're explaining the five parts to your program. Okay. We and, just touched right. on the first. I'll so, and the first and the, 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 the keystone, the foundation of it all is your story. Once you've got that and you know what it is you need to say, the messaging you need to get across in your interviews, now you know, okay, I have to go find the stories, or sorry, I have to find the shows that are right for my me and my message. So now that you have the story, now you've got the context to start your hunt. And then that's a whole process of how you go and you find them and you vet them. And you, I, in my program, we create a top 10 list of these are the shows that I want to be on because I know these are going to be great for my business and for marketing myself. Once you've got that, then you have to pitch them. That's step three. So knowing how to pitch a show in a way that's going to get you booked. 90% of the pitches that podcasts receive do not get a call back. They're, they're rejected. So you mm -hmm. want to be in that. And that that's kind of an industry, industry number. I think it's even a higher number than that, that people just don't call you back. So you need to know how to pitch those shows to get booked. Once you get booked, so now we're going on to step four, you need to know how to show up in such a way that you just look amazing. You look and sound amazing in that interview. And if it's a video 
podcast like mine is, that also then includes in addition to knowing your microphone, knowing how to use it to get the, the best sound, how to condition your room to make sure you're getting decent sound because so important in podcasts. You also know, have to know how to appear on camera. What's the equipment that you need? What's the layout? There's, there's all about that, just the aesthetic of it. But then also there's, how do I talk? How do I find my authentic voice when I'm doing this? That's again, kind of like your story. That's something that we never really had to think about. So for some people it's pretty easy, but for other people, it's a huge challenge. They're not comfortable speaking either. They're not comfortable on the mic or behind the ca- in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. And it takes a bit to get them to the point where when they do that guest appearance, they just rock it. Yeah. And the fifth. There's a lot of strategy involved and a lot of uh, tech geekiness that is right up your alley. Um, yeah, I love that stuff. Uh, but but that's the thing. I don't want people to get way in the weeds on it. I will help you figure out what is the right set of equipment for you. That's kind of the best combination of be- ease of use, best price, and best results. Because I don't want that to be an obstacle in somebody's journey to becoming a podcast guest. Now, the final step in the five steps that I've identified, and this is the one that most people miss when they do go on a podcast, is what to do with it once it drops. You cannot rely on the host or the show itself to make you famous with your podcast episode. You have to have a marketing plan in place for what you do every time you get an episode, how to leverage it right then when it launches, when your podcast episode comes out, but how to continue doing it on an ongoing basis that builds your profile and your brand. Right. And how long after your podcast airs, are you supposed to be keeping up with that? You could be making bank on this for months and years to come. Wow. Like there are people I know who have, who have scored a really great show and they, with a high profile host or a show that in their industry is, is quite the score. You can keep using that for years. You can be using the pictures. You can be using the the thumbnails. You can be using sound bites. You're associating yourself. And that's one of the big benefits of podcast guesting is you are associating yourself with the network and with the profile of the host. Okay. So I'm curious. This sounds like the perfect solution, like I've said before, but what kind of business is podcast guesting actually feasible for? Uh of course, the, the, the easiest thing is if you are a service business and your your face is out there, getting on a podcast is is totally feasible. And okay. if you've got one or two key messages that one that brand story mm-hmm. that is like this little encapsulated nugget of this is who I am, perfect for you. Um, service industries, it's great. A lot of people wonder like, well, but is it good for every service? I I have been really kind of happy to see that there are services that aren't that intuitive that are actually really building their business using podcast guesting. Like for example, uh, real estate. Well, that's maybe not so intuitive, like real estate and podcasting. What? Why would somebody listen to this? There have been a number of people who have made themselves stars in their own state or province or even country on the back of their podcast guesting. As a real estate person, they get on and every one of the episodes that they're on, they're displaying their, their personality, how easy it is to work with them, how knowledgeable they are, and basically painting a picture for the listeners as to how they can help their clientele. When you do that and the other thousand people around you that are your competition are just handing out business cards or have a website, yeah. you stand out as the go-to expert. It paints such a full picture and you get that backstory and, you know, intimate details and yep. you relate so much more to the person. I oh, find the person yeah. listening. Yeah. And what for us as a professional in your own area of professional expertise, you don't think it's a whole lot. Guaranteed somebody who's not used to like your clients, say in the case of real estate, they don't know a lot about it. You just drop a couple of gems about, you know, what they need to be looking out for or how you help them or what's happening in the market right now. You're a genius to them. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, I have to work with that person. And I've seen in another field that was like kind of similar to that, that I was like, really? An accountant. Somebody, again, most people think accountants uh, dry as dust. However, there are accountants that have turned themselves into stars and really rocketed their business and stole a whole bunch of their own market just by getting on podcast shows and talking about how they help their, their, their clients, what they do, what their process is. And again, it broadens the listener's idea of like, oh, wow, I didn't know they could do that. That's, oh, I need to be with them. It sounds like as as long as you're getting creative with it, 
anyone can really hop on here. And again, it comes back to your story. Yeah. You craft that story that when the listener hears it, it's going to kind of open them up and going to make them want to know more and to, to work with you. Right. So does this work for product-based businesses? You know what? I have to say, I was initially a little bit, I guess, a little bit narrowly focused thinking that it was more for service, but I've actually seen a lot of product-based businesses really successfully leverage podcasts as podcast guests, uh, particularly, again, if you can come up with that story, not just here's my product, mm -hmm. here's what I sell. I mean, nobody wants to buy a product, whether they can see it, hear it or whatever, just by here's my product, buy it. You create that story, you tell them though, whatever it is that's special about that product that kind of emotionally triggers them, be it like, for example, it's environmentally safe or it's ethically sourced, or this is what it does, or this is this very uh, significant point in your life in which you'd use my product, or this is how I crafted, whatever it is about your product. You get the strategic. The company was founded. And... Yes, whatever yeah. it is that, it, again, back to your brand story. So even with product-based businesses, podcast casting can be a very powerful part of your marketing plan. Definitely. Yeah, come to think of it, I can think of numerous occasions where I've been listening to a podcast and actually gone out of my way to get on social media or go look up their web address to mm -hmm. look at their product because they sold it so well on just a conversation on a podcast I was listening to. Exactly. As we said earlier, like there, when you're hearing about this product for 30 and 40 minutes, you get pretty emotionally invested in that. And the nice thing <laughs> is the links for a well-produced podcast, the links are right there. So even if you're listening to it on your phone, you can click through and go right to their website. So yeah. what an amazing marketing opportunity. Definitely. Okay. So uh, question for you, what mm -hmm. makes you the person to help with all of this? Well, as you alluded to in, in the introduction, first of all, I'm a podcaster and I know from the podcaster side of things, what it takes to be a good guest, what it takes to get booked, how to pitch, what's missing in most people's approach to podcasting when they come on as a guest. And it, I can help people with that perspective, but where I think I really kind of differentiate myself from somebody else who would be doing this is the fact that I have 15 years experience as an instructional designer. And one of the key components of that is first, before you even start doing any design or production of any large digital project, you have to slow down and think, what's the story? I have done this with probably a hundred different subject matter experts like you, because you are a special subject matter expert going on a podcast as a guest, done this with them to find those key talking points that are going to create the story that we have to tell to take the people that are listening to it from oh, what's this on this increasing journey of engagement to the point where by the end of hearing what it is you say, by the end of your brand story, they really feel like I need to either work with this person or I need to tell somebody about this person. So I've worked on actually multi-million dollar projects where nothing can get started until we figured this out. So yeah. I've got a decade and a half of experience doing this. And this is what I bring to helping people find what is your brand story. Yeah, I've listened to you interviewing clients and the way you do your subject matter expert thing, you just dig down and unearth the gold that they didn't know was necessary, a necessary part of their story. And is really information that their clients need to hear to be sold. And yeah, the really I'm exciting thing is usually at the end of this, they're as excited as I am because they were like, oh my God, I didn't even think of that. Oh, you're so right. That should be part of my, of what I'm telling people. So it, it's kind of like we find the wow factors. It's, yeah. a really, it's actually a really fun part of the process. Well, throughout the conversation, you keep, oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? And it's all things that they get really excited about. And they're like, it, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> yes. There they're is always a eureka them moment. Them. There is always a, that's it. That's it. That's Multiple, it. Always. Yeah. yeah. How is it that you do that? Again, it goes back to 15 years of experience doing it with hundreds of people. I, I don't know. It's like over the years, you just develop kind of almost like a bloodhound's nose for the details and you keep digging until you find it. Because I, I want to find that story that's going to blow people's minds when they go, oh my God, you do that? And yeah, you, you have to dig for that. Damn. I love listening to that process. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Next question. Are there other companies in this field helping with this? 
Yeah, if you are looking to get into podcast guesting, there are a lot of companies that as the service aspects of the whole process. Uh, for example, there are a lot of companies that you could hire to help you find podcast guest bots. And this starts at about $1,000 a month. So if you're putting this into your marketing, you could be looking at you know $12,000 for somebody to be helping you find your guest bots for the year. Uh, there's one company that has contacted me a number of times and I check them out and they charge $1,350. But I know that they are charging that per month for every client. But when they come to me quite often, I can tell you haven't done your research or you would not have been reaching out to me for this client. So how careful, how much attention are you paying to this client for the money that you're yeah. charging them? So, but I'm not to say that all companies are like that, but you, you can, there are companies that will help you find the spots for you because it is time consuming. And if you don't know how to do it, that really takes a load off you. You can keep doing what you're doing in your job or your business, and they'll just come to you with these opportunities. There are also companies that'll help you with repurposing the content. As we were talking about, you know, like how do you really make bank with the content once your episode comes out? There are companies that'll help you do that. And they start at about a thousand dollars for a month as well, just to redo one episode and turn it into a number for number of forms of content. So the thing that kind of bugs me is that none of these companies, I've, I've actually asked them, so do you help your clients figure out what their brand story should be? And generally the response is, oh, no, 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 that, no, we don't do that. We just help them do X. If they want to figure that out, they can go hire a branding coach or they can hire a copywriter or a marketing coach. No, we don't do that. So yeah, there are companies that will help you with it, but I kind of saw the need for there, as I said, those five steps that people, when, when you're getting started, you need to know what to do and how to get these things in place. Yeah. And that's why I've put together my program to address like, those gaps. It yeah, it sounds like you're bringing together all the necessary components in a really easy, straightforward manner. Mm. You're the expert and you don't have to be running around going to all these different services and breaking the bank ultimately. Yeah, and figuring out which of these services I need because you don't know what you don't know sometimes. Definitely. Okay, so what's involved in your podcast guesting fast track program? Break it down for us, tell us the structure, what's involved. Okay, the bulk of it, is four weeks. That's why I call it the fast track. And in that four weeks, we're going to get in, we're going to start, of course, with your story. We bring you in, find out what your brand story is. And that takes pretty much the whole first week. I don't want to skimp on that. We got to make sure we know what we're talking about because like the big projects I've worked in in the past, you don't get started with second and third step until you know that you've nailed down where you're going. So the first week is that. The second week we get into, this is how you find the shows that are right for you and find your process and help you create your top 10 list of shows that you're going to want to try to step three pitch. We work on your pitch. We give you templates and also your personalized approach to how you're going to pitch shows, the shows that you've identified you want to be on. So we've got the story, the shows, the pitch, then we work on ahead of time. We're going to give you the links for you to get the equipment that's right for you. We'll do a quick survey to make sure that this is right for your circumstances, your business, your space, mm -hmm. and you'll have your equipment. We're going to work on how to use it so that you effectively sound great and look great if you're going to be on camera and video podcasts are becoming more and more prevalent. That's I, I, I believe it's something that you have to keep on your radar for the future. So knowing how to look good on camera is also going to be key. And finding your authentic voice. This is the point at which we start working on practicing. So by this time, we're moving into the third week, we're practicing your brand story and how you're telling it and how you tell it on the mic. But I also have guest experts who are going to be coming in starting in week three, that are going to be, they're people who are experts at media, speaking from the stage and doing that, how, how to get booked doing that, but how that works with your podcast guesting, how you can leverage one to help the other, and they, they can be symbiotic. Another guest is going to be talking to us about getting TV coverage. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. How you can take your podcast guesting and leverage it into TV coverage. But these things are also symbiotic and the TV can then help you with your podcasting because mm -hmm. as much as you might think of it as kind of a hierarchy of things and TV is seen as like the, the most prestigious kind of media, 
a lot of people who have full access to TV anytime they want to have it are getting on podcasts. Neil deGrasse Tyson, John Stewart, Michelle Obama, like the biggest stars that you can name. Matthew McConaughey wrote a book. He, it came out, I think, six months ago or so. He did the round on the podcast. He also pushed it on talk shows, television talk shows, but part of the marketing plan was podcasting. So that is going to be, we're going to talk about getting on stage, how that works with your podcasting, getting TV coverage, how you can make that part of your media plan. And then the final guest expert is going to be telling us how to get publicity on all of this. So that by the time you finish, not only are you ready to kill it as a podcast guest and really start making it work for your business, you also have a broader picture of where you're going with this in the future and how you're going to start integrating it into any of these other modalities that you see as working for you. Actually, what I should add there is the fast track in four weeks. That is the core to it, but there is an ongoing community that you can stay in and you can continue getting support and asking questions and comparing notes with the people you went through the program with or other people who have come before or after you. So it's not just four weeks and push you out the door. You hang around because this is creating community of people just like you who get it and want to really make podcast guesting a boon to their business. So it's it's the four weeks of the core stuff and then hang around and keep wow. getting support. That's so, valuable. Yeah, really yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to just say to somebody, okay, see ya, good luck with that. Like, I want to know how it goes and, and if we need to tweak any messaging or if we need to, you know, say we see the results that they're getting with their pitches. Yeah. And we go back and look at that one. I, I want them still connected with me so we can ensure that, that they're on the right track, the fast track to getting their podcast guessing really up and going. And one thing that I forgot to mention is a guarantee that I have in my program is that within the time that you are with me, we will get you guaranteed at least one show. You'll be booked on one show that's going to be beneficial for your business. So I'm hanging with you until that happens. That's the guarantee. So the fast track program is a guaranteed success basically. Pretty much. Wow. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I want to be a part of the experience. You should be. Um, so now that you, you've laid it out, we have an idea of what's involved, how it proceeds throughout four weeks. What can someone expect result-wise from your program? Well, in addition to now knowing exactly what it is that you should be saying anytime you're on camera or behind the mic, and that expands out to also being what you're using in your marketing copy, with that, you know now how to access these different forms of media and how to elevate your profile and your position within your industry or within your field so that you really start rising above the competition. When people find you, you're not just somebody with a website or a Facebook group or a social media page. You're somebody that's out there on some of the biggest shows in your industry. That gives yeah. you inc incredible elevated perceived credibility. I mean, no doubt you deserve the credibility that, that it gives you, but this is bringing you out of hiding and getting you out in plain sight so people see how valuable your services are. Yeah. And you now know how to access all these different medias to really make that spin because quite seriously, as we said way back in the beginning, social media is having ever decreasing value for us. We can't leave it yet. It's kind of like fossil fuels. We're not ready to make the leap. We still need it but it's not good for us. It's not helping us like it used to. So yeah. you, you have to start moving forward with better and more high profile forms of media. And that's what podcast guesting, the podcast guesting fast track program is going to give you. Would you say, I know we've touched on this briefly before, but mm -hmm. being a podcast guest and having that opportunity to speak to an audience, does that give you a little bit of a cred a little bit of cred or a little bit of an edge over competition? There is, there is. And that's something that I often see people don't, they haven't quite wrapped their head around. I mean, in the last five to seven years with Facebook Lives, people have gotten so comfortable with just holding up their phone or talking into the webcam and creating video content, live video content. It's so speaking perfect. speaking to your audience, doesn't yes. that count? You're, you are speaking to your audience. You are. That is the, when they already are your audience. It does, it does not attract somebody who's not your audience nearly as much as it used to. B before when Facebook Live was really in its early days, if you saw somebody was live on Facebook, it really grabbed your attention. You wanted to see, oh my God, who is it? What are they saying? Everyone, literally everyone and 
in some cases their dog is on a Facebook live nowadays. We're not that interested unless we're already in their audience. Podcast guesting gives you the ability to have people discover you and become part of your audience. And there, in addition to that, the whole thing of the interview is something that you really have to kind of think about. If you're just holding up your phone and talking into your phone, like, hi, it's me and I'm doing blah, 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 blah. It's just one person going, I'm amazing. However, psychologically, the whole format of the interview is the host, the question asker who owns this stage and owns the mic, not only giving permission to the second person to speak, they are asking their opinion as an esteemed expert. And psychologically, that actually triggers in the mind, some subconscious minds of the audience, it triggers a perception of elevated status. This person is an authority. This person should be listened to. That is why when you think about it, even our news shows and our, our late night talk shows mm -hmm. are usually interview shows. Yeah. We could have just had the person on and, and just had no one else on the camera and they're just talking and it's like some newsmaker. They come or something. out and introduce themselves. Yes. Yes. I mean, why don't we do that? <laughs> what I do. There's a reason we don't do that is because that anchor on that news show or that talk show host is the authority who is then sharing their stage and that gives them more authority. We feel like, oh, they should be listened to. So you as a business should be leveraging that. Yeah. The, the opportunity to have somebody place you in that position and indicate to their audience that you are an expert and a go-to authority that they should listen to. It's just, it can't even be compared with you doing your own lives. Yeah. Unmatched value. Wow. Okay. So now that we know the podcast guesting is what, where you need to be, what you need to be putting your attention on if you're any type of business service or product based, and you are offering this all in one program, fast track in four weeks. Wow. Sounds like a deal. I can't pass up. Where can people find you? People can find me on my social media, September Smith. They can find me at of, of course, pro.com, which is the website and follow is that me the connect where they can book a call. Yes. To find um, out more about this fast track program. We'll drop the links. We'll have them here. Here it is on the screen links where you can book a call and we can talk about it because I guess there maybe is a really small chance that, that maybe your business isn't right for podcast casting. I would like to explore that and let you know and save your time and money ahead of time. But I, I challenge you to come up with a business that there isn't a niche for in the world of podcasting. So yeah, That's get in touch with me. She's all that. Yeah, book, book a call and let's talk about it. And let's get you fast tracked to the point where you are getting the benefit from podcast casting within four weeks. Wow, this all sounds amazing. Thank you so much for being in the hot seat today, September. It was lovely talking to you. It was a little bit weird not being the host and the one asking the questions, but hey, I love talking about this stuff. She's